Hey everybody, very happy to be driving the all new 2022 Ford Maverick. This is Ford's brand new itty bitty truck that is actually front engine and front wheel drive uh, as a base structure. It's also unit construction, not body on frame, but it is also very cool and has a lot of neat little tricks. And unlike other Ford trucks, there is only one configuration for the Maverick, a Super Crew or four-door truck with the short bed. The bed is about four and a half feet long. So that definitely breaks tradition of having just a slew of options of wheelbases and cabin sizes and bed sizes to choose from. You know, this is obviously a different beast. And in that vein, there are actually only three different trims of Ford Maverick, the XL, this XLT, and the Lariat. The standard powertrain on the Ford Maverick is a hybrid two and a half liter engine. That is a four cylinder engine, of course. You can get an optional engine, which is a turbocharged two liter, and that is a non-hybrid engine. So it's kind of flipping the script in a lot of ways where the standard engine is hybrid and the optional extra engine is non-hybrid. Either engine is available on all three trims of Maverick, XL, XLT, or Lariat, with the optional engine costing an extra $1,085. And while this is inherently a front-wheel drive vehicle, you can get all-wheel drive on the Ford Maverick. It is only available on the non-hybrid turbocharged 2.0-liter engine, and it is only available on the XLT and Lariat trims, and it is an extra $3,305. So this particular truck being XLT, not Lariat, and being front wheel drive, not all wheel drive, and having the standard engine makes it pretty darn inexpensive. In fact, this is the least expensive car I've tested in a long time, I think since the Nissan Kicks, which was over a year ago. Base price for a Ford Maverick XL is $21,490. It is just under $20,000, but that's before destination delivery charge. The base price of the XLT is $24,075, and my test car does have a few options and cost $25,500. Before we get too far, this is a good time to stop and show you around and inside the car. There's a few neat tricks. All right, everybody, let's take a closer look at Ford's brand new little truck. Now, this particular truck is painted in a color called Area 51. Don't know exactly why, but it's a lovely color all the same. It's like a grayish teal, kind of a blend kind of color. And I think it looks cool. Looking at the car in front, you get the pretty basic pickup truck shape. I think Ford did a good job to keep traditional, more squared off pickup truck lines. This grill is interesting with these like open, you know, Pentagon patterns kind of throughout right here. You got a, I think, totally respectable size blue oval right there, and some interesting body colored bumper and then some lower plastics down here. The headlights are actually pretty darn large and in charge if you think about it, but I think ultimately looks cool. Looking at the truck in profile, you can see what I mean about having like the super crew shape with a short bed. And while we are here, I will go ahead and put the dimensions up on the screen, give you a better idea of the size of this thing. And while I'm putting up the dimensions, I'll also let you know that I have a full set of specs in the description, so you can check that out there. Because this is an XLT, you get 17 inch aluminum wheels right there. XLs run on 17 inch steel wheels. The Lariat gets 18s. And my test truck does have the $795 power moonroof option. Taking a look at the truck from the back, again, pretty standard shape. And pet peeve of mine, fake exhaust ports. Well, not here. There is no fake exhaust, just the real exhaust. This is down right there and lovely. Even though the pickup truck bed is small, there are a lot of neat little tricks. Let me show you some of those. All right, this is power locking, but it is a manual tailgate itself. Ford says that this is a four and a half foot long bed when the tailgate is closed, and this extends to six feet when the tailgate is open. And you can see it's got little slots for, you know, cup holders and that kind of thing. And Ford says it can hold 500 pounds like this, no problem. And uh, that makes it helpful for this tailgate to help you with tailgating. Now that we're up here on the bed, I'll let you know that this is a $495 optional spray in bed liner. Now, 
This is not four feet wide right at the floor of the truck. I'll show you, this is a three and a half inch wide tape measure and it reads 39 inches, so that's 42 and a half inches. But you can fit four by eight foot sheets of plywood or whatever if you put them above the wheel arches here, the wheel wells. This measures 49 inches, so 52 and a half inches here to here. And you can put the tailgate in a midway position and I'll show you that in a minute as well. Also, I'll show you here, there's a lot of neat little things integrated into the bed. Obviously, you've got uh, tie-ins here, one over there, and some up here as well. And there's more options and bolts and holes so you can customize and add even more if you want. Also, four put-in slots here for two by sixes and here and here for a two by fours to be laid flat and go across the bed they're on both sides so that gives you uh, different ways to give two levels to the tailgate or compartmentalize also you have here vertical two by four spot um, to uh, help par um, partition the bed up and i'll show you in a sec you have a couple more in the back of the bed as well here's that second two by six spot and Here's that back two by four spot as well. This compartment right here is an optional spot that some trucks can have. You can have some op optional extras there. Going to the other side, we do have a storage compartment here. Nice little spot here. And we also have on both sides, this 12 volt accessory um, output right here. Ford built in to the Maverick ports where you can add your own fused electric things to power in the Maverick. So if you want to do some DIY and have your own electricity, Ford makes it easier for you to do that without screwing up the core wiring harness. And I think that's a really cool idea. All right, and as you can see in the back, there's more tie downs here and here. And there's also a couple of tie downs here and here, but those aren't just tie downs. I'll explain that in just a second. Full payload capacity of the Ford Maverick is 1500 pounds. If you wanna haul some stuff that's like physically long or wide and you wanna carry it level, you can adjust the tailgate to be in a different position. What you do is pick up the bed, release the latch here. This is how you release the tailgate. Remount it up here, do it on both sides. And now the pickup bed sits here and you can see it sits a little bit higher. I do not have four by eight sheets of plywood, but I do have two by four by eights. So I'm gonna use one here as an example. So there it is sitting level in the pickup truck bed and the midway position of the tailgate holds it pretty darn level. Okay, one more trick to show with the tailgate. All right, so I mentioned that these are more tie downs here right on the tailgate right here, but the way they're shaped, they also double as bottle openers. Gotta test it. Ah, cheers everybody. Let's take a look inside. Well, let's finish the beer and then take a look inside. This is actually kind of a funky and cool interior. I mean, take a look at this. You've got, you know, pretty reasonable liner up here and this is all standard, but check this out. This like exposed plastic with this not finished door handle kind of built in. It is a power window, but then you have nice and easy access to an exposed bottle holder and then some extra storage right here. I think that's a neat, quirky, clever idea. Also, we're not done with storage with this truck. It has these two straps on either side, pull on those, and you've got a lot of storage underneath. This is a pretty small car inside the cabin. So I have knee room. I'm five foot 11 or 181 centimeters tall, but I would say it's less than an inch. And I have 0 0.01 inches of ankle room as well. And also the seat bottom is pretty low, so I don't have a ton of thigh support. And as you could just see, I have more than a 90 degree bend in my knees, but you know, shoulder and elbow room is pretty decent and it's comfortable. I just wouldn't want to do long trips in here. If you don't have three passengers, you do get an armrest and cup holders, which is always lovely. And you guys can fight over this one and only power source right here. Anyway, let's take a look up front. 
as you'll walk up, you'll see that you do get, this is kind of a Ford tradition to have a keypad. That's an additional way to unlock the car. If say you lock the keys in the car, it's a handy thing to have. And just like the back seat, you do have that kind of like quirky, cool door liner in the front as well with also the usefulness. Because this is an XLT, this is a manually adjusting seat there. And there are the adjustments, but that's no big deal. And we do have these rubberized kind of floor liners right here. It is tilt and telescope steering adjustment. It is manual and right there. And here are lights and fuel doors and those kinds of buttons right here. So I like seeing cloth seats. They're more comfortable. It's less of an issue if it's warm and sweaty outside. So this is nice to see. This particular truck does not have push button start, which is becoming rare these days. So this is almost novel to have to turn a key to start the truck, but it doesn't actually start. It's a hybrid. So it just says ready right there because there's plenty of battery charge to get moving without starting the engine. As I'm talking, the engine probably will start up. Now you do have actual gauges there and there, speedometer and like power output, not really a tachometer, but kind of sorta. And then this is a digital screen to help you in the middle. You also do get an eight inch touch screen right here. It does of course have Bluetooth and it does also have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but it is wired. And the screen is a little bit basic compared to some of the fancier cars out there, but easy to read and works just fine. You do have climate control and beneath that you have this kind of like funky orange space for um, extra storage and stuff like that. And just above that, you have a couple of USB ports and another cigarette lighter style plug right there. Beneath that are cup holders, your dial prindle right there, and you do have an electric parking brake beneath that. This is how you adjust drive modes right there. This is traction control on and off and auto brake hold if you want that more orange floored funky storage right there and even more storage down there looking up here are the adjustments for our 795 dollars moonroof but the privacy panel is manually adjusted and right there now this truck is a little bit spartan when it comes to features and options but you can get the $2,500 luxury package, and that would add things like heated seats, heated steering wheel, remote start, AC converters for AC power in the cabin, and a lot more. Okay, I moved the truck actually to get in the shade to tell you about drive modes. So here's my button for drive modes. You get five drive modes in this front wheel drive truck. They are normal, tow haul, slippery, eco, and sport. So you've got five drive modes. These are powertrain adjustments to help you get the most out of the two and a half liter hybrid engine. And we will be spending most of our time in the normal drive mode, but hey, we might find ourselves in sport once or twice. Speaking of that, let's get back to the drive. All right, let's dig into this powertrain a little bit more. As I said, this is a standard hybrid engine. It is a two and a half liter four cylinder engine that runs on the Atkinson cycle, which means that you get more of an expansion ratio than a compression ratio. And that makes it a little bit more efficient, but a little bit less powerful given the size of the engine. The gasoline engine on its own makes 162 horsepower and 155 pound feet of torque. And the electric motor on its own actually makes a lot of torque and 126 horsepower, but does so at much lower RPMs. So if you're looking at total system output, torque is actually still 155 pound feet and horsepower goes up a little, um, but not by much. 191 horsepower is your peak output. But what the electric motor does is give you good amounts of power throughout the rev range. So even though typically a non-turbocharged two and a half liter engine would need to get some revs up before you feel any real power, that's not the case because of this hybrid system. This hybrid powertrain does get a continuously variable transmission, so no actual gears. And as I said before, it is front wheel drive, but of course all wheel drive is optional. Just as a real quick aside, the optional engine, the turbocharged two liter engine is 250 horsepower and 277 pound feet of torque. And it does get an eight speed automatic transmission as well, but it does definitely suffer compared to the hybrid when it comes to fuel economy. This hybrid, especially because it's only front wheel drive, gets 42 miles to the gallon in the city, 33 miles to the gallon on the highway, 37 miles to the gallon combined. 
that compares to the non-hybrid getting 23 miles to the gallon in the city, 30 miles to the gallon on the highway, 26 combined. Still pretty good for a small truck, but not nearly as good as the hybrid. And if you get the all-wheel drive version of the truck, that takes the numbers down a little further to 22 miles to the gallon in the city, 29 on the highway, 25 combined. So given that we have the least capable powertrain in this Maverick, it is good to know how well it accelerates. Let me show you that right now. All right, everybody, time for an acceleration test. I do have the Maverick in sport mode. I also have the traction control off, but this is a 191 horsepower hybrid with front wheel drive. So we'll see how it goes. Bit of brake torque and off we go. Yeah, <laughs> pretty lackluster launch. It really didn't want to do anything, kind of eased into it. But once we got moving, things started going pretty quickly. You know, the CVT gets us in a nice hurry RPMs and keeps us there. And yeah, that's really reasonable acceleration. Yeah, you know, aside from the launch, really not bad. We were building speed pretty darn well. And I will say that it actually adds confidence to the ability for this Maverick to haul some things and tow some things. And having that electric motor to fill in the gaps in the lower revs to give you more grunt, that means a lot. That's really helpful. And I'm laughing before I even say it because it is kind of silly. Trucks go around corners too, and it's good to know how well. So let me show you how this thing handles. All right, everybody, time for a handling test. I do have the Maverick in sport mode and I have the traction control off, but I also have a solid rear axle, a front wheel drive car, and it's actually a hybrid truck. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah, pretty good acceleration. Not a lot of grip though, and a fair amount of body roll. Yeah, got a lot of roll and even some pitch under braking. Yeah, not much grip here. A not very responsive front end either. Steering's pretty light not terribly precise either but it's all stable and respectable you know i'm getting understeer i'm not getting any weird movements from the rear end or anything like that so everything's stable and everything's easy it's just not terribly fast not terribly responsive not terribly engaging but it's not like i expected that much so totally fine totally adequate keeps your blood pressure low right i mean yeah what would you expect not that much and you know it handled accordingly and you know there's little things that could be improved i think the brake feel could actually be a little bit better the integration of the hybrid system and the standard brakes is not quite as uh linear and progressive as some of the best systems out there but again we're talking about a very inexpensive pickup truck here and we're also talking about handling prowess so it's totally fine it's totally safe it's totally competent that's the point and actually as a result it's actually very very comfortable on the road as i'm talking to you right now we are absorbing bumps with no problem at all just kind of floating down the road nice and smoothly and that would be true on back roads like this or on the interstate let me show you that all right everybody time for a quick jaunt on the interstate i now have the maverick in normal driving mode and traction control is back on Let's see how this thing does all right slowly making our way up to cruising speed you know it accelerates just fine we don't have a tachometer per se here so we can't see what engine revs are but uh I would guess we're not much more than 2,000 RPM and we're cruising with traffic right around 78 miles an hour. So as I mentioned in the handling test, we had a fair amount of body roll and even some pitch and dive braking and accelerating. So the benefit of that is we now have a very pleasant ride on the interstate. We've got a nice soft suspension, good suspension tune, and we have a fair amount of uh, tire sidewall as well. So it makes absorbing bumps and heaves and expansion joints and all that stuff really easy to do. Steering still feels a little bit less precise than ideal but on here it's just pleasant road noise is pleasantly low and uh, wind noise is actually quite low as well considering that this is such a low cost and that it's a pickup truck that is actually 
above expectations. Bravo to Ford there. It's just regular cruise control here and uh, not tons of lane keep, lane change, all those types of things. You know, we're largely on our own here and <laughs> that is obviously just fine with me. To feel like you're in complete control is a nice added bonus. So yeah, generally speaking, this is a perfectly pleasant highway cruiser. The seats are comfortable, the touchscreen is easy to use, everything is easy peasy. All right, this is a pickup truck. Pickup trucks haul things, they tow things. I already told you that this has a payload capacity of 1,500 pounds. That's not that much, really, when you start throwing in passengers and things like that as well, but in terms of like practical use, I'm sure it's adequate. And this truck can tow 2,000 pounds. Not a big number, but that is enough to haul any kind of jet ski, small snowmobile, small boat, even a small camper trailer if you want. So you do have some options. And if you do get the non-hybrid powertrain and the all-wheel drive system and <laughs> what's called the 4K towing package for $745, you can up the towing rating to 4,000 pounds. And that gets you into decent sized boat, couple of snowmobiles, and even a decent sized camper as well. Though, even with that package, you're still not up to class three, which is 5,000 pounds and kind of like where I get more comfortable when you start talking about bigger things like that. Still, considering the size of this truck, that's really pretty good. You know, this truck will have a much more urban and family and diverse set of uses considering how much more car like it is than other trucks out there even other unibody based trucks like the hyundai santa cruz and the honda ridgeline both trucks which i've tested by the way and i will make sure to have links for you to check those out because those are also interesting trucks to be sure but that means safety certainly does play a role in purchasing decisions and the Maverick does have what's called Ford Copilot 360. Now, I'll put the list up on the screen of what comes standard. It's actually not that much, but again, I feel a little bit like a broken record, but I think it's worth saying, considering the price of this truck, that's really a decent amount of stuff that's offered. And if you wanna spend an extra $650, you can get more Ford Copilot 360 stuff. Finally, if you get the top trim truck, and by that I mean the Lariat trim and the optional extra Lariat luxury package, then you also get adaptive cruise control as well. But let's take a step back and look at this thing. It's really impressive on a lot of levels. No small part of that impression is the price. The fact that you can get this truck for under 20 grand, again, that's before taxes and delivery and all that kind of stuff, but in the low 20s after all that, is really impressive and that this car as equipped with the features that i showed you for not much more than twenty-five thousand dollars, wow that's really really good and considering the price it operates smoothly it operates pretty darn quietly even on the interstate and drives perfectly adequately otherwise plus you've got tons and neat and useful little features Ford did a lot of work to give you some uh, variation in how to use the pickup truck bed, which I appreciate, and even add some elements for you to add your own elements to the truck. I think that ability to make it easier to add some personalization to the truck is a really, really good idea and neat feature. And being able to easily add personalized touches to make the truck a little bit more your own is the type of thing that makes you like it that much more. And I have to tell you, this truck already has a lot to like. I'm Robin Warner, thank you for watching. And if you are still watching, I would really appreciate it if you like this video and subscribe to my channel. Those things really do help me out quite a lot. Okay, goodbye. Hybrid. Ha, 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 ha.